This is the segment measurement tutorial. Now you all know what a segment is from our tutorial on points, lines, and planes. Here's some interesting information about segments and how to measure them. The first thing that we want to discuss is the midpoint. The midpoint is a point on a line or segment that divides that line or segment into two equal lengths. So let me show you a couple examples on the diagrams below. On the number line on the lower left, I'm going to go ahead and draw in a segment. And that segment I'm going to draw in from negative 8 right here to positive 6 right here. And I'll label my point at negative 8, point A, and my point at 6, point B. So the segment we're going to be dealing with is going to be segment AB. Now the midpoint is a point that divides this segment into two equal lengths. So what I want to know first is how long segment AB is. So what we can do is count from negative 8 to positive 6. If you were to count each individual tick mark between negative 8 and positive 6, you'd find that the measurement of AB is 14 units. So I know that 7 units would be exactly halfway between A and B. So you can count 7 units in from either A or B. I'm going to go ahead and count from B. So if it starts at 6, I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units to right here. And negative 1 would be the midpoint between points A and B. So this point, I'll label it point C, would be the midpoint of segment AB. Now we could also have the midpoint on a graph, like on the graph to our right. So let's take a look at that. Imagine on our graph that we had points at negative 5, positive 5, and positive 6, positive 2. And these points I'm going to label x and y. Well, we would connect those two points into a mid-segment, like so. And the midpoint of this mid-segment, mid-segment xy, would be right in the middle of this segment, an equal distance from point x and point y. And I'll show you how to calculate that distance later on in this tutorial. Let's go on and move on to our next topic, which is segment bisector. Segment bisector occurs when a segment ray or line intersects a segment at the segment's midpoint. So imagine on our graph on the right, we had two other points. Our first point is going to be at negative 6, negative 4, and our second point will be at 5, negative 4. Our first point we'll just label point D, and our second point we can label point E. Now I'll draw a segment joining points D and E, like so. So with segment DE, a segment bisector is going to occur right at the midpoint of that segment. And since segment DE runs from negative 6 to positive 5 on the x-axis, we know that it has a length of 11 units. That length is just the absolute value of negative 6 plus negative 5, the distance between those two points on the x-axis. So if the total distance of DE is 11 units, half that distance would be five and a half units. So again, you can count from either point, D or E, count inwards five and a half units. If you did so from point E, you'd go back, if it's already at point five on the x-axis, five and a half points would bring you back one half point past, so to the left of the y-axis, right here. So, a segment that's going to bisect segment DE is going to bisect it right through here. So I'll go ahead and draw that segment in. So now we have our red segment which is bisecting the blue segment DE and I'm just going to label our red segment MN. 
Notice how it passed right through the midpoint of segment DE. That's important. That's what turns segment MN into a segment bisector. An important thing to note once you've found a segment bisector is that you're actually cutting a segment into two equal halves. And when you cut a segment into two equal halves, we call those halves congruent segments. A congruent segment is any number of segments that have an equal length. So when you're bisecting a segment, bi meaning two, you're cutting that segment into two congruent segments, two segments of equal lengths because you're cutting it right at the midpoint, the point in the middle. So what we have here is another diagram on the lower left. This is line QR being bisected by line ST. So you could take a look at it as just two segments, QR and ST if you'd like. So now that we're looking at it as two segments, what if segment QR had a measurement of 10 inches long and the midpoint happened to occur right where ST was bisecting it? And we could put that midpoint here and call it midpoint P. If that were the case, then segment QP would have a length of 5 inches and segment PR would have a length of 5 inches because point P is at the midpoint and segment ST is cutting segment QR into two congruent halves. Now, something that you'll use in the future to measure these segments is called the distance formula. And distance is just a description of how far apart two points are using numerical measurements. Let's go ahead and practice applying the distance formula one time. Why don't we pick two points? I'll pick point negative 5, negative 4, and I'll call that point A. And then I'll pick a point positive 8, positive 2, and we'll call that point B. I'll go ahead and draw a line connecting points A and B to turn that into segment AB. Over on the left now, I'll write that we have segment AB. Don't forget to draw the segment line above it. And point A is at coordinates negative 5, negative 4. And point B is at coordinates 8, comma 2. So now we want to calculate the distance between points A and B. It's not as simple as it would be if this were a straight line going either horizontally or vertically because then you could just count the units. This one actually has a positive slope running to the right. So let's go ahead and use the distance formula to calculate that. I'm going to label point A as our point 1 for the distance formula and point B as our point 2. So, when calculating distance, d, distance, is equal to the square root of the difference of x1, which in our case is negative 5, minus x2, which is 8 in our case, quantity squared, plus y1, which in our case is negative 4, minus y2, which is 2, quantity squared. Now we'll go ahead and simplify what's in our parentheses. Negative 5 minus 8 is negative 13. Quantity squared still, plus a negative 4 minus 2, which is negative 6, quantity squared. Now I'll go ahead and square everything that's in parentheses under the radical. Negative 13 squared is positive 169. And negative 6 squared is positive 36. So when you add those two together under the radical, you get 205. So the distance between points A and B is the square root of 205. 
which if you put into your calculator is roughly 14.3. And if you want to count over on the graph, you'll see that that's about accurate. So that's how we use the distance formula if we want to calculate the length of a segment on a graph like this.